you, Tanya and Maria, for having me here tonight. And it's a pleasure to be here. And I also want to uh, give a thanks to Carolyn Wheeler, a friend of mine. And she's the one who introduced me to Tanya and uh, told Tanya about me. And uh, so I'm thrilled to be here. I'm very happy to be here and talk about something that I'm really passionate about. And that's uh, social media, web design, web development, and online marketing, and SEO. And someone asked me earlier, what's SEO? SEO is search engine optimization. I, I take a lot of this for granted, I think because I know it, everyone else should know it. And so thank you for bringing that to my attention. That's what SEO stands for. Um, I want to, I already have a really great feeling about this group, and I, I plan to, to return. Um, and um, I'm a big fan of Christy Rogers. I, I've known her for several years. Uh, that will be another great event to attend. And let's see here. And uh, this is a great handout for you to have for tonight to take notes. I also have a handout. This is all I'm going to have for tonight. I'm not going to use a PowerPoint presentation or <coughs> the flip chart or anything. This is all you need. And, and then you can just make little notes on the side or on the back. And what I do is I create a lot of links for you to go and do research or to look at a blog post that I recommend that will share additional information to what I'm going to talk about tonight. And I don't want this presentation to be overwhelming in any way. Um, this is a very relaxing, very calm presentation, uh, interactive. I invite you to ask questions. Please feel free to ask questions. So I am Phyllis Garland. And I run a web development business in San Mateo, just about 30 miles south of here. And I have had experience with web development and marketing and social media for about 15 years. And about two or three years ago, well actually about five years ago, I started my own business. I started as a virtual assistant. And I did, I had this laundry list of all these things that I could do. And I just, I just, as a business owner, I just sort of floundered because nobody understood what a virtual assistant did. So I just kind of narrowed it down and I had a business coach tell me, you know, focus on one or two things that you're really passionate about doing, that you really enjoy doing. And that's why I decided to focus on web development and social media and search engine optimization. And over the last three years, my focus has been developing word developing websites in WordPress. WordPress is a content management system. It's easy for anyone, for a business owner, to take control of the website and drop in photos, remove photos, uh, remove content, add content. It's like using a Word document, a Microsoft Word document, and that's where WordPress actually gets its name. And Years ago, a, word, a website would cost anywhere from a minimum, maybe $5,000 all the way up to $20,000. Now I can create a website, a WordPress website, for as low as, you know, maybe $2,000. Uh, that's, you know, for a basic website. Um, I, I also offer WordPress workshops in San Mateo, and I, I will be moving down here to uh, the offices of, of Silicon Valley to teach the workshops. I teach, it's called build your web, your WordPress website in a day. And you basically walk in and as long as you have an account, a WordPress account, and, and the, the software set up on your server, you will walk out with a website. It might be just be, you know, kind of basic, home page, about page, contact us page, services page, but you will have a website. Uh, so that's, that's what I'm focusing on uh, lately, uh, these last several months. Um, today, I want to talk to you, I want to share with you some tips and some tools on how to bring prospects back to your website and how to get them to stick to your website. Uh, the average time that most people spend on a website is about 30 to 50 seconds. Sometimes it's even less than that because your website it gives off a first impression. It's like 
meeting somebody for the first time, it takes less than five seconds to make a first impression. It's the same thing with the website. But with the website, it's less than a blink of an eye. And, um, <laughs> and I'm, I'm going to get into you know, uh, why people wow. would look at it and just quickly move on to the next website. I'm going to go ahead and hand these out. Using the WordPress and Bluehost, or do you um, I Bluehost is great. Yes, I just found, I just discovered a new hosting company called Web Hosting Logic. They're based down in San Diego, and I the reason why I like working with this company is I anytime I have problems, I speak directly with the owner of the company, and if I send him an email, he gets right back to me. It's webhostinglogic.com, and if you go to the website, there is an 800 number on the website. Hosting is $4.95 a month. It can be as low as $4.95 a month. If you buy a three-year plan, it's $4.95 a month. I think if you do a one-year plan, then it's about $5.95 a month. Um, but I just I just love it because you get such personal experience with. Uh, just speaking directly with the owner of the company. Were there any extras? I'm going to have to keep one for myself. <laughs> yes, there are. They are right here. I've got them. Okay, great. Um, Thank you. Thank yes. you. My daughter uses Weebly. I, Weebly? Is it, I don't even know what that is and how it fits with Bluehost and the other. Okay, Weebly is um, basically a template type of software program. And I don't really recommend the those soft, those type of software programs. There's there's Wixit, there's Weebly, and a couple others. They don't they're not crawled by the search engines. Um, crawled. Crawled. Um, <laughs> the search engines crawl your website every every night or every other night. It, there's there's like a algorithm. There's like there's, there's a program that's set up. And so it's hard for the robots or the spiders to crawl a spite like a, um, a, a website like that, um, that type of software, because there's a lot of software uh, coding. That, this is why I highly recommend WordPress, because Google and WordPress love each other. And, um, but anyway, so I'm going to get into that a little bit later. I want to. Oh dear, I'm over my head. Talk about uh, the handout here. Oh, Phyllis? Yes. Somebody needs to just slow down just a little bit. Okay. Um, oh, you're fine. She's fine. Are you? Okay. She's fine. Okay. I'll never get it. Hey, just I, keep I going. I know because I did a webinar today and they used the same words. <laughs> you just keep going. I'll okay. understand parts of it. Okay, we can talk after as well. Okay. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, you, you're fine. I'll be around for a while. <laughs> I want to know how many of you shop at Target? seems like most of us do. And um, why why do you like to shop at Target? Close. What's Good that? Value. It's close. It's close. close. Good close. value. You can find everything you want in one shop. Mm -hmm. Less expensive. Yeah. Yeah. I want more expensive. <laughs> <laughs> then. Well, Target just recently did a survey um, with their customers and they asked their, their customers, what do you like about shopping at Target? And the top three answers were, it's clean, it's bright, and it's easy to navigate through. Wouldn't you all agree? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, I, I, that's why I love Target. It, the white aisles, um, I used, you know, I have, my son is now 12, but I had a stroller and I had him. And it's just <laughs> plenty of room to get down the aisles. And um, you can go into any target across the nation and you know that you will find clothes over here when you walk into the right you know that you can find diapers straight up this aisle <laughs> and groceries over here over to your left your website should be the same it should be clean it should be bright and it should be easy to navigate every page should look the same that your navigation bar should be horizontal up at the top of the page and it should be clear each 
each tab on the navigation menu, it should be very clear where that tab or that link is going to take your prospect or your visitors. <coughs> now I'm going, to re I'm going to refer to this uh, handout here. I'm also going to just show you what it looks like online. Um, I designed this website probably about a year ago. And, and since I designed it, uh, Dr. Campbell, Dr. Cynthia Campbell, actually sold her practice to another chiropractor. And he's made a lot of changes. So if you go to it, it's going to look a little different than what you're seeing here. I'm going to talk about important information that needs to be above the fold. So as you can see here, this information, this is what I mean above the fold. So it's like half that. That's above the fold. So do you mean like above the, like what's the bottom of the screen? Is that without what scrolling? Without, without scrolling. scrolling. Yeah. Yes, First because view. seventy percent of visitors to your website do not scroll. Mm -hmm. They're only looking for important information like a phone number. Um, a, an address if you're a brick and mortar company, um, maybe social media icons, a way to email you. That's what most people are looking for. They just want to get on and get off. So you want to make sure that information is right there on the home page, easy for them to access. You don't want them hunting through your whole entire website looking for a phone number. I remember I was trying to, I also run a women's networking group down in San Mateo. I remember I was looking for a speaker. I wanted her to come and speak to my group, and I went to her website. I could not find her phone number anywhere. I couldn't believe it. I, you know, I went to Facebook, and no phone number there. She had a couple of email addresses on there, and I, I contacted her eventually through Facebook. But it's like, it can't be that difficult. So let's make sure that all your important contact information is above the fold, easy to access. You'll notice number one, which is on the right, up in the right hand corner of your page. The arrow is pointing to buttons. Call to action buttons, or you might heard the term CTA. Call to action buttons. For this particular client, you can book your chiropractic appointment online right through her website. It's pretty handy, it's pretty convenient. So what I did is I created a cute little red button, bright red, and it says book now. That's what that red button there says, so book now. You see how big it is up here on the screen? Book now. And then it has her Yelp profile and it has her LinkedIn profile and her Facebook profile on there. How do you get the buttons? How do you make them? There are two links that I posted here. One is a website that you can go to and it has thousands of buttons that you can download to your own computer and you can use them yourself. So pay now, call us now, book now, email me now. Just hundreds and hundreds of buttons that you that they're, they're free to use. Anyone can use them. Now you can create your own button as well through a button generator, and I, I added the link here, and that's how I create that's how I created the book now button. Phyllis, yes, me. but that's not a widget. That's not a widget. Okay. No. Uh, number two. I think this is the second most important thing to have on your website, and that's a blog. Writing a blog on a weekly basis, if you can do it daily, yay, fabulous, kudos to you. Weekly is great, monthly is great. And the reason why... What was the best one? Uh, daily. Daily. Okay. Daily, of course. The reason why I recommend blogging to my clients is because Google loves fresh content. Like I said, they crawl the internet every single night. They're looking for fresh new content. If your website has been sitting for years and years and years and years, 
it's not going it, to, they're not going to crawl it. It's going to go, and so therefore it'll rank further and further and further, you know, page 20, page 25, page 30. Google is going to rank pages or websites that blog on a regular basis on page 1, 2, and 3, and 4, and 5. And, and a blog doesn't have to be a thousand words. It could be as short as 200 words. And you can take, you can find a blog on somebody else's website, and you can cite that blog. You can write like in a little introduction paragraph saying, oh, I found this blog at this particular website, and I found it relevant because yada, 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 and post a link to that blog post. And Google will pick that up as well. So it's as a minimum of 200 words, no more than 500, because if it's, if it's more than 500 words, people are not going to read it. They're not going to take the time to read it. It's just too much information. Did you have a question? I was worried. If, you're to, if you just have a blog, would you set it up differently than this or similar? Um, you can set it up similar. So, like your home page would be a blog, would be all the blog posts, yes. Okay. I, I recommend doing that as well. Carolyn? It's interesting, when you look at the screen, I went to a photography club one time and they said that when you look at a photograph, you divide it into thirds. Mm -hmm. And that's really mm -hmm. what you've done visually, is uh, as have it spaced that way, so that the proportions just kind of work for the eyes. Yes. Yeah. Um, what's the name for that? It's like the golden rule or something? Rule of thirds. Rule of thirds. Yeah. 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 Okay, anyone have any questions about blog? Yes. Me too. So, so on your website, then you should have like a little link, like horizontal. One of those links should be blog. Yes, that should and be then, on your navigation bar. And then someone should freshen that and add some little text to it every day or every week. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. So the the crawling thing. So you're saying the Weebly's does not get crawled, and so it's never going to be included in their right it hierarchy. May, they might crawl it. It might crawl only the first page or the second page, like the home page and the about page. But with WordPress, they crawl every single page, every single blog post. They just work hand in hand mm -hmm. that way. Yes. Um, best days to post blogs? Um, I would say Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and early Saturday morning at 6 a.m. So is this specific for um, industry, uh, you know, a specific industry, or it's in general? In general. Okay. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, early Saturday. Yes, early Saturday morning. So you said, I'm sorry, you said Monday, Wednesday? No, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And Saturday mornings. Sunday morning is good too. And if you're sending out newsletters, those are good times as well. Those are the best times. Is there a reason for that? Is there a logic? Yes. So Monday, people are returning from the weekend and they're overwhelmed with catching up on emails oh and work and so on and so forth. <coughs> Tuesday is a little more relaxed. Um, Wednesday, Thursday, same thing. Friday, everybody checks out. Oh. <laughs> Saturday morning, it's it's relaxing. It's like, okay, what can I do? I'm gonna read from my nook, you know, in bed, and I'll read. I'll catch up on my blogs that I'm subscribing to. Okay, thank you. Are you gonna talk about how to get people to subscribe to your blog? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Is there a is a is there a better place on your website to put your blog that's recommended, or isn't that better where you put it? Um, absolutely, up, up in place? the navigation bar. Uh, someone had talked about, can we have it on the home page? Having it on the home page is really great, too. And what I recommend, um, if you flip your page over, over on the sidebar, always have a link to your blog post. So over here on this side. On the home page. Um, you can have it on the home. It depends on how you have your home page set up. If your home page is set up like this, um, there's, there's no sidebar. But you can have it down here as a widget. But if you, if you flip it over on this side. So put a link to the blog in the sidebar. On the sidebar. Yes. And there's a way to create uh, on your sidebars. There's archives. There's categories. Um, also, um, I use a particular 
WordPress theme. It's called Woo Themes Canvas, and it's very advanced for a for having a website blog on WordPress. And they have like these really cute widgets to where if you have five or six blog posts, it'll give your visitors a sneak peek. Like it'll give them little excerpt excerpts with pictures. So. Um, that's another great way to advertise your blog throughout your whole entire website. How did you call that widget? That um, it's it, the WordPress theme is from Woo Themes, W O O T H E M E S dot com, and it's a I think it's one hundred and twenty five dollars. Carolyn, is that do you know? Um, I, I, you know, I have a developer license for it, so is it's it on the dashboard way. under themes or no? It wouldn't because be you'd have to you have to pay for it, so it wouldn't be under the free themes. You'd have to go out to the internet and Google new themes or look it up, and then they have hundreds of themes that you can choose from. But they're 125 dollars, but they're super advanced. They work really well with Google and the search engines. It's really advanced. I highly recommend if you're going to purchase a theme is to purchase a blue themes theme. What is, what what are you guys talking about? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? First you started it with widgets and then you did a woo theme. Yeah. What's a theme? A theme is what you would use to set up your WordPress site. Uh-huh. And um, when you first sign up for WordPress, WordPress will give you two themes, but they're very basic and they're doable they'll work but I, I recommend upgrading to to the woo themes so you go and pick one yes are you talking about the picture that goes across the top of a website is that a thing? put down the word um, y -O -L -A. it could be yes oh okay hey, actually mine's in blogger you can just show them what you're talking about oh, yeah. I have okay just, just so you can show me. This is just my personal blog. My website is free. Yeah, that's it. But I'm going to upgrade one. That's perfect. Um, so who had the question about can the link? I made my website. Having the link to. Up. So on your website, here's the main page. Here's the main information. This is a sidebar. So here, um, Janet has her blog posts. She has um, a link. She has like the uh, pictures and the excerpts to her additional blog posts. So the post just shows up on the side. Yes. Yeah, just to give people an, a, a little sneak peek of what you're writing about or what you're sharing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So how do we identify, I mean, if we have a website, mm -hmm. how would we know if it was HTML or WordPress? Most websites are done in HTML mm -hmm. and CSS or PHP. So uh, how do you identify that when you get on the site? Is there a way to do that? Or no, not? there's really no way. You have to ask to your designer. You have to ask your de okay. designer or developer. Mm -hmm. well, yes. all, all WordPresses will use HTML and CSS and then on the back end mm -hmm. PHP. So anything that's WordPress will be using those three that are very much the standard in the industry. Yes. HTML, mm -hmm. CSS, and and PHP. The whole idea is it's transparent, right? You don't have to know that. Yes. Like WordPress does it for you. Yeah, Word WordPress does all of that coding for you. You don't have to worry about any of that. That that's why it's so easy for business owners to just take control of their website these days using WordPress. There's, there's other content management systems, Joomla, Drupal, a few others. Um, so let's go ahead and move on to number three. Number three uh, Facebook tips. And I think this is a, a blog post that I wrote, and it's just uh, like 12 ways or 25 ways to bring fans to your Facebook page, your business page. What? Do you have Facebook? Do you have a yes. Facebook business page? Yes. So I wrote a blog post 
and it's it's called uh, 12 ways to bring fans it, I wrote it way back when before there were likes they were fans to bring fans to your business page is business page different than a website yes it's Facebook oh Facebook okay mm -hmm. well, how do we get one how do you I have a business one? I have a personal one. Okay, on your on your personal side, mm -hmm. you can easily s sign up for a business page, a Facebook business page. Mm -hmm. um, go to facebook.com slash pages. And it says, uh, up in the right-hand corner, it says create a page. And then it walks you through step-by-step. Step. It's really easy. Yeah, and then it just set it up just you know upload your logo your business logo add your contact your phone number your your business URL your domain name information about your business and um, you can even purchase advertising you can purchase advertising I wouldn't recommend it though it's not worth it it's not worth spending the money um, Facebook is is a great way to be social with your friends, with your family, with prospects, maybe. People get onto Facebook and they just want to have fun. They don't want to be, you know, uh, constantly see, be seeing, you know, advertisements and buy this and buy that and do this. And they want to get on there and have fun. The place that you want to advertise is you know maybe LinkedIn LinkedIn is a little better there's more professionals on LinkedIn but the reason why I have Facebook on here is because uh, it's a way for people to get to know you a little bit more because we we do business with people that we trust and people that we know so this is a way for them to get to know you a little bit better than just looking at your website so would you if I think my target audience is not, they're not Facebook fans. Do you still think I should have a Facebook page? No. Oh. No. <laughs> no, I, I, if you want to be found online, I highly recommend blogging. Okay. And, and getting into forums on LinkedIn in your business industry. Getting into forums and forums? getting into groups. Oh, Gr forums. Groups. forums. Okay. Yeah, but be careful. Don't, don't go through, like, one day when I was bored and I went through and I joined like 12 groups and now I have like a hundred emails a day and I'm yeah you can shut your today it was like off, okay yeah. we're gonna cut it down to like two LinkedIn groups yeah no that's great I recommend you know getting out there and finding 15 to 20 groups and figuring out which one you want to be part of right yeah and then narrowing it down to about four or five you can you can shut off the emails or you and you can also just um, control the frequency of getting the emails. Yeah, because uh, yeah. you never know when you want to dip back in the pond and find out what's going on. You may not want to leave the group, but you want to be more excited. But, but when you really get into it, you are limited to the number of groups that you can uh, subscribe to. Uh -huh. So yes, after you get going, you want to do a lot of them, but just be selective. And and then when you get when you max out, then you have to start taking off groups to join other groups. So. Mm -hmm. Um, one of the things that you know a lot of people do that join a lot of the groups is they look for the highest population groups that they um, you know, can find. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then interact in the groups. Yeah. Make sure you interact, be part of the community conversation. So, so if your site doesn't have a blog little tab, mm -hmm. then you can't blog. So you can you can blog on Blogger. You can create a separate account on Blogger.com. Okay. Okay. Or you can set up an account on WordPress.com, but the two won't be linked the to the website. Yeah. That's why I recommend WordPress. WordPress is all in one: your website and your blog, and it's all cohesive. And people aren't jumping from here to there. I don't know if it's appropriate, but mine is through Yola, and it was free. And I've got all the pages I want, and the blogs, and yeah. and the up upgrade does all the extra stuff. You could do anything. 
It and it's like twenty dollars a month. It's amazing. What? <laughs> I said it writes your blogs for you. <laughs> well, that's the one problem. <laughs> Did you say it was WordPress.com? WordPress.com. Yes. That they they offer free free blogs. I hear I hear good things about Yola. I love it. It's gorgeous. Mm. Yeah. And I'm not even taking advantage of, of everything you know, they have to one offer. little tiny bit of what they have to offer. Yeah. And when you upgrade, they take their name off the bottom. Yes. I kind of didn't want to take the name off. Why? So, because somewhere in there, I want to be able to tell people oh. it's good. Well, it's you can good probably become part of their affiliate program mm -hmm. and put a button on, their, on yeah. your website, and then, and then you'll get credit. Yeah, I've got a couple of those. <laughs> so, when I find out how what my website is created with, um, so do some not... Um, have capabilities of blogging, or do all of them? You know what I'm talking about? If, if, if it's, it's set HTML, up, mm -hmm. do they all have, or CSS or PHP, do they all have capabilities or WordPress of a little blog? WordPress. It has to be set up on WordPress. Well, oh, it has to be set up on WordPress to have the blogging button. Yes. Okay. Otherwise, you have to do the blogger.com or WordPress.com. It's completely different and from. to the website. Yes. Okay. Okay, let's move on to number four. One more question? Yeah, how do you feel about stumble upon? Um, you know, I don't use I don't use it. Yeah. So I don't use it much, but I found stumble. some really awesome, yeah. awesome information Stum there. Stumbled upon. Stumble upon. Yeah. It's got kind of a funny little logo. What is it? It's it's like a micro blog. Micro blog, is that right? Oh. No, it's like you find different companies and you learn about them through stumble upon. You can find. I guess it's kind of like an Angie's list. Well, you put Stuff you stumbled upon. Based on, based on interest, you tell them what you, you what things you like, yeah, and then they just and pop up. Okay. They're pretty cool. Thank you. More things to read. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cool. But you said don't use it. Uh, no, I'm, I didn't say that. I don't use it. Okay. I'm not familiar with it. The other one is Pinterest. Oh, I absolutely love my Pinterest. Because <laughs> last night we were looking up something, and when you're looking up a mass, I didn't want to have to bookmark 30 pages. Mm -hmm. I can just pin the five of them that I want, and then they're all together for me. Mm -hmm. That's great. I've heard great things about Pinterest. I, I other, have an account, but I never use it because. Well, the I just other don't reason that time. we use it is to get yourself known and to have. Something to blog about, something to Facebook about. Yeah, it kind no, of no, no, no. I hear it's really great. It's it's right up there with Facebook and Twitter. It's following mm -hmm. uh, Twitter. I just found it like two weeks ago. Yeah, no, I it's really great. love it. It's great. And um, I have a friend who's teaching a workshop on Pinterest. Uh, it's like a six-hour workshop. If you want more information on it, I'll, I'll send it to you. Sure. All right. Let's go ahead and move on to number four. Number four is the navigation menu. So you will see on this particular website, it's you can't see it because it's in white. It says home, and then it says about us, chiropractic services, massage, daily challenge, blog, testimonials, contact. <coughs> and these, these are in order for a specific reason. You always want to make sure you have the home link on every single page of your website because if, if somebody stumbled upon your website while they were doing a Google search and came across your your back exercise page you want to be able to give them a way to get back to the home page so always make sure you have a home tab on your navigation bar your second page is the about us page I was wondering you have it as a different color is there is, is it yes. so it doesn't conflict with the about us? Yes, that's okay. correct. You want to make sure it, it's, it's called breadcrumbs. You want to let people know where they're at when they're on that particular page. So your link in the navigation bar should be different. It kind of just lets them know, oh, I'm on the home page or I'm on the about us page. Oh, okay. Uh, the about us page would be your second page. That's the second most clicked on page people want to know 
you know, who they're dealing with or who's, who they will eventually be working with. Make sure on the About Us page you have a little bio, don't get too technical. Um, make it really personal and add a picture or a video. Video is the tops and I'm going to talk about that in just a couple of minutes. Um, and then you, the, your next tab would be services. So Dr. Campbell had chiropractic and she had back exercises for her, her services. And then you want to have your blog link, a link to your blog. And then your testimonials. Make sure you have testimonials on your website. Even if it's somebody wrote, uh, you know, a true three sentence blurb about you and your services. Make sure it's on your website. That's the third highly clicked um, page on a website. If you're on LinkedIn, and I highly recommend that you ask for, re is it recommendations on LinkedIn? Yeah, recommendations on LinkedIn. Um, people are happy to do it, and it looks good. And what you can do is, if you have recommendations on LinkedIn, you can add them to your website. And if you have Yelp reviews, you can add your Yelp reviews to your website as well. People want to see what, what, what it's like to work with you. And then you, yes? I'm sorry. So you're saying do a whole another section, even though you have the Yelp button up top? Yes. Okay. Have, have so a testimonials a page or a reviews page or something on your website. Besides the tab or in addition to? In addition to. Oh, okay. In addition to your Yelp. How do we get tab. into Yelp or do any All you have to do is log on to Yelp.com <coughs> and sign up for an account. It takes less than five minutes. And what I would recommend is uploading pictures and maybe some video about your business and your services. Is that a free directory? It is free. But if you sign up as a business owner, Yelp will call you and ask if, if you you'd be interested in buying their program, three hundred or five hundred dollars a month to upgrade to something. To upgrade, seriously? That yeah. Much? Yes. Now I have some clients who have upgraded, and all their business comes from Yelp. Um, One client is a hypnotherapist, and it it's really helped her tremendously. Wow. It's worth it to her. I just want to share because um, my hu my husband is um, self-employed. He has his own business. He's a plumber, and that's where he gets all of his jobs. Mm -hmm. And he had like five stars or whatever, six stars the most. But yeah, he did upgrade it, and it's just his business is like went fully. Yes. Yeah. So I highly recommend signing up for Yelp. Yeah, it's great. Oh, yeah. you're good. And it's two oh, yes. hundred a month, yeah. and it's worth it. Um, well, that's only the three, upgrade, right? No, I think it's month. No, it's three hundred. I think it's three hundred per month, or it's not a. It's not cheap. Yeah. Yeah. But I think it's from three minimum is three hundred a month. Depends. Yeah. I, I think it depends. It's so you said it's sign up for free, but yes, you can you. you can have a free because what they do is when you upgrade to you know to the three hundred dollar or the five hundred dollar version, they'll if if I were to do a search on Yelp restaurants in San Mateo, they're going to show me their businesses who paid money. They're going to show their businesses first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's well, how it that's works. That's why it's in the order that it is. Yeah. When you do a search, you, do. you get some of these weird yes. off the wall yeah. mm -hmm. just just responses or answers. Mm -hmm. And that's why. Yes. Yola has that too, but it's $20 a month. Yes. Yes. Oh. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. Okay, let's talk about opt-in marketing or um, email marketing. This is not we're going to go to Are we done five. with four? We're on number five, yes. right? Oh, we're on yes. five now. Yes. What was the, uh, sorry, what sorry. was the white button that was? That's the home button. Home. Sorry, I missed one button on the navigation bar. That's the contact <coughs> button. Contact button. Make sure on your contact page you have your name, your business name, your phone number, email address. When you use WordPress, you can add a contact form. And there's a way that you can add a little CAPTCHA, you know those crazy little numbers and letters to the bottom of your 
uh, to the bottom of your contact form. And that's just to prevent spammers and hackers. From I got it for free, but I don't remember who I got it from. And all I had to do was copy paste the yeah. HTML thing. Yeah, that's it. And it looks so professional. It looks good. Which is so cool. And I actually had somebody contact me for it. Good. Excellent. I don't remember who I did it through. Though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, a contact form is great to have on your website. I on my that. website, I have two different forms. I have work with me, and it has like all these different questions. You know, what's your budget for your website? You know, who's your competitor? Blah blah blah. And then I have the regular contact page. So there's, you can customize your forms as well. It just doesn't have to be name, address, email, so on and so forth. Okay, let's talk about number five. So the way that we're going to grow our business is by coming out tonight and networking, meeting mm -hmm. people, number one. That's the best way, right? Actually meeting people in person. And, and then... The second best way, we can't be out networking 24-7, but our website could be working for us 24-7. So we want to have a way for people to get onto our website and opt in for some sort of white paper. And in exchange for the white paper or the gift, you're going to ask for their email address. You give me your email address, and I'll give you this. So this is how your list is going to build, right? So I met Maria tonight. I, I, I'm getting her business card. I'm taking it home with me. I'm adding it to my Mailchimp. Not really, but <laughs> but I I'm adding it her adding her name and her email address to my Mailchimp um, database, and then I'm going to send out my newsletter the first of the month. And Maria is now a new contact, and now she's going to receive my newsletter. And Mail Mailchimp Mailchimp.com. C H I M P. Oh, okay. C H I M P. <laughs> Mailchimp.com. Okay. And um, that's a way of establishing relationships with my prospects. She hasn't bought anything from me yet. I'm hoping she will eventually in the future. But this is a way with the newsletter of, of telling her about my products, telling her about my services. So when I talk about a gift or a white paper, you want to give your prospects who visit your site something really super juicy, something tangible, something that provides value to them. So that way they're going to say, I want that, I need it, and they're going to leave their email address. And then once you, that information is automatically fed to your MailChimp account, there's constant contact, there's AWeber, there's several other email resources out there. So you want to make sure you have your opt-in form on every single page of your website. Not just on your contact page or not on your testimonials page. It has to be on your home page, on your sidebar, on your contact page, on your services page. At the bottom of your page, you can even add it down here. What is that for? The, the opt-in? Yeah. The opt-in form is you're asking people to submit their email address, uh -uh. yeah, and then you're giving them a free gift in exchange. Now going What's back to the white paper. White Sorry. paper is a is like a tangible product, a free gift. Um, so on my website, I have so I I have um, you know seven ways to uh, generate leads on your website, and it's about eight pages long. Eight to ten pages long, so that's my that's my tangible product. That's my white paper, but it could be you know just a single, one-sided document, but whatever it is, make it attractive, make it juicy, make it attractive. Yes. Uh, so where on this is her opt-in button? Do you see number? No, no, no. It's not a button. It's number five. Mm -hmm. Do you see the arrow pointing up? Receive your free copy of Five Ways to Achieve Superior Health Balance through Chiropractic Care. Yes. Okay. Submit your email address here. And then she sends it to him. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So when her visitor submits the email address, in return, oh. they'll get the white paper. And so you do something too. You send some kind of pamphlet or something. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, I have a 
little report, you report that I send. Yeah, and then I have a newsletter. I have a monthly newsletter that I send out. Oh. What on earth do you put in a newsletter? What do you call this? You, what are you calling that? The opt-in button or the opt-in? The opt-in opt form. Opt-in opt -in form. form. Thank right you. Here. Number oh, five. Okay, I'm having a hard time reading. Oh, <laughs> yes. yeah, we write. Database the email address. The database. The, the email address. Where does it go? It goes into your Mailchimp. Okay. Um, your constant contact, your Aweber, your email, um, your newsletter resource, whatever you're using. Okay. They give you a plugin. You can just put it on your website. Yeah. Okay. They give you plugins. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. And. Um, going back to the Woo themes, what's great about Woo themes is that at the bottom of every page on your website, you should have an opt-in, the opt-in form as well. Because the reason behind that is if they've made it, if they started reading your services page or if they started reading your blog post and they made it to the bottom, they're interested. They want to know more. So give them more information. Ask them to opt in to your newsletter. Ask them to read another blog post. Ask them to call you. Give them some sort of call to action. Don't just let them sit there and go, what do I do next? I don't know. Because that's what happens um, when, when we don't tell them what to do. Um, it's like when I was a flight attendant for United for 10 years, and um, the minute passengers walked through the front doors of the airport, people would go, where do I go? What do I do? And there would be directions, signs telling them, up the escalator to go to gate 70, or down the escalator to baggage claim. It's the same, it works the same way. We have to keep tell, telling them, direct them which way to go. Let's move on to number six. We'll talk about videos. I recommend having a video on your home page. If you don't want it on your home page, you can always add it to your About Us or About Me page. This is, that, that is like really scary. It is scary. The idea of putting, I have pictures, <laughs> but video? Yeah, I know, video is scary. But you know what, you have to get past, oh my God, my hair is terrible, and look at that dress I have on. People are not paying attention to that. Well, they are on mine because that's what it's about. Oh. <laughs> oh, you're Mary it's about image and Mary Kay. Kay. Yeah. Oh, so right. Okay. It, okay. I'm, and put somebody else on there. Yeah. yeah. And no, I, I, it's good that they could get to know me. I'm just, oh, gosh, okay. Yes. They're listening to your message, though. That's, right. that's really what they're paying attention to. Okay. So when you're saying on the video, uh, and working through on a third, is it on the lower third or is it the top third, or can you swap places? Um, you, I would recommend it like putting it here, so on the top it, like third. where the pictures are on, on this website. The pictures rotate. Oh, okay. These pictures rotate. They, they're slides, and they just kind of rotate. So you can even put it there. Okay. Oh. It, 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 that would be like a more advanced theme, WordPress theme, if you wanted to do you that. Know, amazingly, video is on the on the top of my web page. Yes. And it's embedded in a hero section, is, is kind of what they call the top section. But it, just like she has a photos there, there's many themes, or most your themes, or you could get a, a plug-in, you can put video right in the top. Yes. But, uh, yes. Thank you for sharing that, Troy. Yeah. What did you, did you say have two? Did you said have one on your home page and have one? On your about us or your about oh. me page, yes. So I want to share a little story with you how video has worked for me. It's in, in definitely increased my, my business. Uh, I added video to my website probably about two and a half, three years ago. And I used a little flip camera. I wish I brought it with me it's just so I can show you how easy it is to create a video. Uh, my flip camera, it cost $100, and um, I set it up on a tripod. Um, at the time, my son was nine. We walked out to the park. We found like this beautiful background, and I just did my 60-second elevator pitch, and my son taped it for me. You know, when I was done, he just shut it off, and then I went home, and on my flip camera, it has like a little portable USB port, and all I did was 
plug it into there, and then uploaded it to YouTube. And then YouTube allows you to embed links from the YouTube videos onto your own website. So that's what I have on my website right now. It's three years old, but one of these days I'll update it. But it's working. I don't want to. I don't want to do anything, you know, if, uh, to uh, to disrupt that. So whenever a prospect calls me, and I'll ask them, "How did you find me? Who did you? Who referred you to me?" Um, and uh, they will say, "Either I was referred to you, or I found you through generic search on Google, and I came across your website and I watched your video." your video nailed it. Um, because I got to see there's an actual person behind that computer. It, they just felt some sort of a connection. So uh, that's, that's just how well video has, has worked for me and I've heard other success stories from other business owners when they have video on their website. It's interactive. It's not this same old boring stale web information on websites. Anyone have any questions about video? Do you, when you're setting up websites, um, do you, most of your clients do their own or do they use a service? Um, some do their own. I do refer some of my clients to this brilliant videographer. And she does like a two minute infomercial and it's not just sitting in front of the camera talking. She goes to their office and she does like a like a voiceover and then she shoots them working at their computer or talking to clients, but you hear the voiceover. So it's not like you're sitting, you know, in front of a camera for sixty seconds or two minutes. She does beautiful work. Yeah. So but you know, if you're if you're on a budget and you, you know, can't afford to spend two hundred, three hundred dollars, a flip camera works just as well. Mm -hmm. Or even your little your little iPhone or a regular camera. So what's a flip camera? Flip camera. It's a little video camera. It it's kind of looks like an iPhone, but it's just a camera. Yeah, it's not they're no longer phone. with us. <laughs> they're down. Flip's gone. You can't get them anymore. Oh. oh. Yeah, yeah. No. You know what? I um I bought another one. It's a Sony. No, it's Kodak, and it's it's just. The reason why, it wasn't, I didn't have a flip, I had a bloggy, a Sony bloggy, and the head was, you can twist the head, so I can actually watch myself on the camera as, as, I, was, as I was. Oh, doing. was it a brand? Flip Sony, was a brand. Sony oh. bloggy, yeah. Okay, thanks. <laughs> well, yeah. most of your um, point and clicks have video on them, isn't Yes, it? exactly. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I mean, that's, yeah. that's yes. the job. Yeah, your Blackberry, your iPhone, mm -hmm. your regular little Cute. Minolta 35 millimeter camera. What length do you recommend for a little video? No more than two minutes. Keep it short, Keep it short and sweet. Mm -hmm. That should be pretty painless. <laughs> Very painless. Yeah. And I, I would recommend, you know, not having a whole lot of content on your website. People just don't read anymore. They just don't have the time. If you are comfortable in front of the camera, why not talk about your services for three to four minutes and to have people watch that instead of reading all this content? They don't do it. They just don't have the time. They're in a hurry. People are actually more apt to watch two videos that are 30 seconds long than mm -hmm. one that's a minute or watch two sure. that are one minute each than mm -hmm. one that's two minutes. I, I kind of agree. You, sure you can embed actually video. playlists from YouTube. It's just the same way that you would embed a video. And I kind of like that too because then your videos can be two or three minutes, and hey, if they want to stick around, they get to watch another theme in the same playlist. Mm -hmm. And for search engine optimization, you can have different keywords for different videos which are in the same playlist, mm -hmm. and it becomes like just a bigger and bigger funnel to bring people to your content or your web page. And yeah, keep the videos short, but then use a playlist. I love playlists. Yeah. Sorry. Don't get me started. Oh, no, that's great. Also, you have your phone number. <laughs> yeah, if you do video and you find that you want to change and correct the video, if you already linked it and embedded it everywhere and shared the link, you can't go do that. But if you put it in a playlist, oh. you can control. You can go back and like, oh, no, the video changed. The company changed. I have to say this. You can change the video and keep the same link for the playlist. Uh -huh. Sorry, I just love that's playlists. That's great. That's great. Thank you for sharing that. Awesome. Okay. Um, uh, let's see here. Just... 
a couple more things and then we're going to wrap it up, right? Okay, good. Um, I'm just going to go to the back of the page here and see if I got everything. By the way, right this, this whole idea here is fabulous. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Right? Yeah, definitely. This is one of the best handouts I've ever been handed. Because you gave us resources, not just telling us. And I'm writing on it so I'll remember what on earth it was. <laughs> yes. Now, what I would recommend, and I'm totally guilty of doing this, I, I would take a workshop or a class and I would get information or I'd get a booklet and I have every intention of going home and applying what I learned that weekend or a week later and I, I just don't, I wouldn't do, I don't do anything with it and it wouldn't get done. So what I would recommend is taking some time, taking, setting some time aside this weekend or sometime next week and go through this and apply these tips and these tools. This is the only way you're gonna you know, generate leads and, and, and bring in contacts to your website. Apply the material that, that I've, I've, I've talked about here tonight. It works. It really does. Um, you so I plugins. Think, what's that? You talk about plugins that you recommend. Yes. Oh gosh. Um, Tell us what they are. Yeah. What's a uh, plugin? What is okay. it? So now we're getting into to WordPress. If you have a WordPress that's already set up, WordPress website blog already set up. Um, a plugin is a piece of software, a software that's like this long, and it's bundled into something like this, uh, a plugin. So I don't have to write the code anymore. I have, all I have to do is find the plugin online and install it through the WordPress website. So for example, like, like I'm doing a blog, you know, if I want to do my recipes, they have a thing called Easy Recipes, so I don't have to do it all myself. It, 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 the HTML is already are written, and all I have to do is type in my information, and it already has it there set for me. And I can add pictures, video, whatever I want. I don't have to do all that. Yes. Huh. So yes. So, uh, Sounds good. back when I was coding on, on, on websites, I used to create a contact form on the contact page. And just for, you know, like, name, address, phone number, email address, it would, it would take, like, all this code just to add this contact form to the site. Now all I have to do is just drop in the plugin to the widget, and it, uh, it populates itself. What's a widget? A widget works with the plugin. It's like a placeholder mm -hmm. for your plugin on your website. Okay. Does, does that help? Does that explain? Oh, oh you want, like, the top ten? Or? Yeah. yeah, just top ten. Like I said, okay. go to um, play. Yeah. Okay. Yes, you know, I have, I like, as the Yes, um, I have a list on my website, okay. and I know that we're running short on time. Go over. What's okay. your website? Do you want me to go over the plugin list? Just go time? over time. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> yes, go over time. <laughs> okay, um, it's San Mateo Web Design. And then you can look at this as well afterwards. This is the list right here. Uh, about plugins, I'm sorry. Uh, one thing I love is is uh, searching for the best plugin. You can spend a lot of time, especially like on WordPress.org. What I found works really well for me is to type in a search that says "review of top calendar plugins" uh -huh. and uh, or review of top. WordPress calendar plugins in a Google search and then use Google to tell you to bring you only searches of those reviews that happened to last or two, a couple months mm -hmm. or in 2012 so you're getting very relevant reviews and then you'll find there's almost every time I'll find somebody who's done a review of the top 12 plugins for calendars okay. and they'll have screenshots and uh, they've already ranked them and it saves me hours mm -hmm. just typing review of top plug-in category right. instead of searching and trying and installing and hating it and uninstalling but I yes. love it. Okay. Yeah, and so I would just recommend I've been doing that and I've been getting annoyed. Oh. Yeah. I, I would just um, You don't like his way? <laughs> no, no, no. My way. His way is way better. I've been yes. doing it the other way. Okay. And I would recommend if you have the a WordPress 12. site, if you are working in WordPress right now, is yeah, do your research you on your plugins before you install them because some of them don't work 
the way they're supposed to, the way they said, and they can bring your website down. So just do a lot of research. Go through wordpress.org, not .com, but .org, and they'll give their own reviews on the plugins. And if your website, there are chances that your website can go down, make sure you always have a backup of your website, even if it's not a WordPress website. Uh, you know, GoDaddy was down for a whole day a couple weeks ago. Yes. But they gave us a coupon yeah, thing, they did. They did. and I needed another domain name, and I got like 50% off. Oh, good. Excellent. Great. Yeah, so, you know, GoDaddy was hacked into. I mean, you would never think that that would happen to GoDaddy. It could happen to any business, any corporation. And it can happen to your website, too. So what do you mean by so backup? Take, How? So just make sure your website is backed up. There are plugins. If you're using WordPress, there are um, plugins that you can use. If you're not using WordPress and your website is being hosted, say, through GoDaddy or HostMonster or Bluehost, all you need to do is call the company and say, can you help? Can you walk me through? I need to back up my website. Can you help me with that? and they'll help you with it. They'll show you how to do it. And most hosting companies will do like a rolling 30-day backup. So if your site goes down and you call them and you say, my, for some reason, I don't know what happened, my site just crashed, and they, they can uh, restore it for you, no problem, as long as it's with, it, within 30 days. What does that do? Does that save your information on your website? It saves everything. Oh. Do they usually charge for that, or? Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, I know GoDaddy charges 150. So if you that can figure out, no, 150 to restore your database oh, okay. if your computer goes down. Um, so I would recommend, you know, um, learning yourself how to do it, restore it. Is that possible? Yeah, it is. Any other questions? Because that is. The conclusion. So if someone wanted to have you build your website, what would be some of the things that they prepare and then what are some of the topics that you cover in your workshops? In, in my workshops? Well, I teach a workshop called Learn WordPress in a Day and we cover everything. Setting it up, um, setting up pages. I, ha I do have some information on it here. If you just want to look at the agenda just to get an idea. And I also have a, I run a blogging club. It's like an accountability group for people who like to blog. And I, I usually have a guest speaker who comes in and they talk about writing, you know, how to write, what to write about. Um, and so then I talk about why you should blog and the important reasons for blogging and so on and so forth. So I have more information if, you, if you're interested. I have a question about keywords. Does WordPress allow you to put keywords in there behind the scenes? Yes. Okay. Yes, they do. And uh, I gave the list of key plugins um, to I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm Angelique. Angelique. And, and it has all in one SEO. Mm -hmm. All in one SEO. And there's also Yoast, Y O A S T dot com. You can go to his website, and he has a great plugin for SEO. Y O E S T. No. Y O A S T. Like toast. Yes. Toast with a Y. No. Uh, I have a question about keywords. I'm going to have. I read that the long tail is better than just a uh -huh. word. Is yes, that that's correct. The one. Yes. Sorry, what? That? The long tail, like instead of saying surfing. Talk about surfing in San Diego. Yes. So it's more specific, and then your SEO goes up. Yes, that's correct. Yes, that's that, and that's also more to deal with local search. You want to focus on being found locally. Um, so if you were a surf instructor, you know you'd say uh, surfing instruction, surfing teacher in Santa Cruz, surfing teacher in Monterey. Yeah, and you're in your and you don't even use the word in, just say yeah. surfing instructor Santa Cruz or um, yeah, Google's actually moving away from just key words. They want to see strength. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's how people are gonna do a search anyway, right? We're, if we're looking if I'm looking for a beautician in Burlingame, you know, hair salon in Burlingame, 
that's how I'm going to do my search. Yeah. Yes. Um, your web or your seminar that you're putting on that for the WordPress. Yes. Uh, do you actually do the? Do I mean? Do you? Is there working? Yes, seminar? it's a hands-on demonstration. Yes, uh, there's a a projector and a computer. And we bring our computer. You bring your own laptop. laptop. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And yeah. then how much is the charge on that? It's one hundred and ninety-seven dollars, but. With my women's group, I offer, I give them a discount of $50, and I'll, I'll extend that discount as well to this group tonight. And I, like I said, I have information on it if you're interested. It's, it's a full day shop, workshop, but it flies by, it's really quick, like 10 to 6, sorry, 10 to 4, mm -hmm. and we take about a half hour for lunch, and um, we go through the all-in-one SEO pack, we talk about title tags and keywords and the whole thing. And, Really great. I have a question about the social media. Is there a way to regionalize like your Facebook or your LinkedIn or any mm -hmm. of those social well Yelp is already local, right? Yes. But is there a way to put that into like a Facebook page saying that I'm only catering to the Silicon Valley versus mm -hmm. you know somebody in Washington looking at it, they'll know it's for Silicon Valley. Is there any way to do that? Um, social media. You mean for your for your website? I yeah, for like the social media aspects. Like mm -hmm. if you have a Facebook page, your mm -hmm. business page, you know, somebody can look you up and they don't know where you are. But if you wanted to target just people locally, is there a way mm -hmm. to do that? Because with the website, you can't. Like you just yeah. said, you could say servicing Monterey or whatever yeah. in the yeah. keywords. But is there something like that that you know of? I don't. I don't. Somebody was asking me, and I said I don't think so, but I thought I'd yeah. ask you. So, on Facebook, mm -hmm. yeah, no, I don't know. Because Facebook, the only thing that Facebook is going to come up with is, you know, Phyllis Garland, Facebook, that's it. Mm -hmm. N nothing that I write in Facebook or that I share in Facebook is, is um, public. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. That's what I thought. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, I no, I don't, right yeah, that. so. <laughs> Yelp, though. Yelp, though, of course, mm -hmm. is. I'll tell them about about Yelp, so. Thanks. Is Yelp just California or just U.S.? Everywhere, yeah. It's, U.S. It's nationwide. It's international. Oh, it's international? international. Wow, I didn't it's know that. Yeah, I didn't know that. Um, you said something, and I didn't catch it, so I made a little note. You said something about stopping spammers. Mm -hmm. What was it? I didn't catch what you said, how to stop them. CAPTCHAs. Uh, C-A-P-T. C H A. You can just do a Google search. Captcha. 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 Yes. Okay. Yes. And that's that, that, yeah. that prevents hackers and spammers from getting into your email and, and your website. Now, when GoDaddy was hacked, I mean, they have a lot of security <coughs> yes. information. Were yeah. credit cards mm -hmm. compromised and all uh, that kind I of stuff? I don't think so. I don't think so. A lot of that stuff is encrypted. Yeah. It's sitting in servers encrypted, so yeah, I wouldn't worry about that. Phyllis, would you recommend CAPTCHA and a Kismet? Yes. A Kismet? Because a Kismet is for your blog. How is that spelled? Cap, A K. Kismet? A, A, Kismet. A K I S M E T. Yeah, that's right. I spelled it right. A Kismet is for your actual blog posts. And the CAPTCHA is for your, your contact form, your online contact form. Well, so why do you need to put that on your blog so people don't write in your blog like you wrote something or so they don't steal it? No, so they don't spam you, so they don't send you nasty messages about Viagra and, oh. you know, all this other garbage that they send. So that's included in your, in your blog? In your comments. Oh. It's a little encrypted word. Is that what you're talking about? The, uh, the little box where it says type these letters? That's is that? CAPTCHA. CAPTCHA, okay. Yeah, and then oh. KISMA is different. That's for the blog. So I have to okay. That's funny letters. What's yeah. that? How does the a KISMET work? A KISMET works similar to CAPTCHA. Um, a KISMET is a software algorithm where if it, it reads the comments that are left on your blog post, and it, if there's any indication that it's a, a spam, piece of spam, they'll throw it out. They'll knock it into spam for you. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, so so you might see some weird stuff on the internet if you're reading a blog post. People will talk about cell phones, Viagra, just silly sunglasses, Louis Vuitton bags, just anything to, to get their, their messages out there. So it's a <laughs> converter. Send it to blog though, rather than capture it or everything else. But capture, right, that's correct. Yeah. I'll, and I'll take one more question. You can get a free Akisma key when you set up your WordPress.com free account and then use that key on wherever you host your website, I believe. Okay. Is that right? I don't use the .com, so I don't know, but okay. there is a way to get a Kismet for free. Okay. Yeah. That was a comment. Was that a question or a comment? <laughs> One more question from you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, so I've been thinking of setting up a store on Etsy. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. would you suggest I do my own website or do Etsy? I would do both. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. But, and, and but can you save your stuff. When you write it into one, copy save that so that you don't have to write it again. Oh, I always put it in a Word document. There you go. I always put it in a Word document. Good. Do you use their advertising when you use the Etsy? I mean, does that help? I don't use I Etsy. I do something right. That's more for creative tangible things. things. Yeah. Crafty people. <laughs> I'm a techie person. <laughs> If somebody types into a Word document, then I don't know about copying and pasting that into an HTML page. Because I don't know if you can always do that. Sometimes you can have a problem with that. Did you have any comment about that? So you have a Microsoft Word document? Well, one time I typed up uh, what I wanted to say in a Word document, and I pasted it into an Eventbrite page and oh, crashed yes. my page. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so then I had to recreate my page. Yes. Because the one was HTML and the other was not. Mm -hmm. So what do you do about that? Um, you come see. to her seminar. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. Just going into Eventbrite, like copying into Eventbrite. Yeah, I had an Eventbrite page, and I was doing an event, and I typed all the copy into a WordPress. Yeah document and then I pasted it into Eventbrite and it crashed my Eventbrite page. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But Carolyn, I honestly I do not know because I've never had a problem with that because I do a lot of copy and pasting it and mm -hmm. Eventbrite too. You've never and had it, a problem. I've never had any problems. It, you know, all the HTML is there. It's it looks exactly the way I had it in my Word document. So maybe there was something a little funny. Yeah, she may have had an illegal character. Yeah. Something a little funny in your Word document that, that, that happened. Maybe it was open office instead of... Uh, Maybe. Yeah, I'm sorry. I don't okay. know the answer. Yeah, yeah I was just going to say one of the solutions I use is I'll tell people, you know, send it to me any way you want, but then I copy and paste it into Notepad because that will strip all oh, the behind-the-scenes stuff. I forgot. That's yeah, what the Notepad right said to do. Okay. And then from there... We even had to do that. We were just changing the registry from one website to another. And mm -hmm. we, I had to tell the person, don't take it right from my email. Copy, paste it into Notepad, then put it into mm -hmm. the, because mm -hmm. it was this long string of letters and you want to type it in. So anyway, yeah, yeah that's a one way to look around. Look okay. At fixing yeah. it. Good. That's, that's good to know. Thank you for sharing that. Okay. Thank you. Good, good job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.